to another language. Sitakant Mahapatra has received almost all the major literary awards and honors in the country, including the Oriya Sahitya Academy Award, the Central Sahitya Academy Award, the International Academy of Poets Citation, the Kumaran Asan Poetry Award, the Soviet Land Nehru Award, the Award of the Highest Honor by the Soka University of Tokyo, Sarla Award, Joshua Sahitya Samman, the Third World Hindi Conference Award, the Orissa Council of Culture Award, and the coveted Padma Bhushan and the Bharatiya Gyanpeet Awards. An eminent anthropologist, he is the foremost interpreter of the oral poetry of various Indian tribes. He has translated and edited 10 volumes of such poetry, including the definitive They Sing Life. And not content with interpreting the oral poetry into the modern medium, Sitakant Mahapatra has sought to meticulously research, investigate and present tribal society in its various manifestations. My involvement with the tribal world of Orisha and the tribal way of life began in 1967 when I was the Deputy Commissioner of the district of Sundargarh in the heartland of which of the Munda country is situated the Raurkela steel plant. I had first listened to their mellifluous songs as they returned from work in the mines and the factories. Later when I asked for the text of the song, I felt that they spoke to me as a practicing poet because here was some kind of a freshness of imagery some kind of authentic expression of the emotions of the heart and a lyricism which was unequal in its musicality. I learnt later on Santali. Having learnt Santali, I had access to four other local languages like Mundari, Ho and so on because they have over the years evolved a common language called Sadri. Over the years also, I tried to collect their oral poetry, not in a simulated situation, but during actual festivals and life cycle rituals. I documented these oral songs over the years and this resulted as monographs on individual tribal communities uh, songs resulting in their linking it to their rituals because most songs are also connected with rituals, connected with dance numbers. Based on these 10 anthologies of uh, oral poetry and some new poems, I had edited a volume called They Sing Life, which the UNESCO in its representative collection work has published recently. On the hills sloping ground, I asked you to give me love dreams, a touch, tobacco leaves. And you said, here there are only the harvesting men, not here. In the twilight dark, at the place where the village now begins to be restless with the scent of Mahula, I asked for your affection, your body, or else just give your word, I said. And you said, I'm always afraid of the fireflies, and the lonely stars, it is better that we leave this solitary place. Inside the forest, when the beating of the heart could be heard, I asked for your love, your touch. And you said, oh no, here there is just the pale grey earth. Wouldn't this flower-like body, this pure unblemished soul, turn earth pale? Not here, not here. Beside the rivulet, there was no one just the lone bird that sang. I asked for your touch, for darkness. And you said, on the rivulet's clear mirror, everything is seen. Not here, not here. The whole world had dropped off to sleep, even the moon and the stars. I asked for your touch, asked for life and for my helpless, shivering soul, begged for a small place in the nest of your body. And you said, even in the dark, inside your eyes mirror, everything is clearly seen. 
Not only has Sita Kant Mahapatra's prose and poetry been extensively translated into various Indian and foreign languages, they have elicited considerable critical response as well. Although he himself does not attach much importance to research on his work, there have already been two DLITs and PhD dissertations in Oriya and scholarly works in Kannada, Hindi and English. The mythographer of time being of particular significance. It's now about 50 years I have been writing poetry. The first bunch of poems were published way back in 1955. The first anthology was published in 63. And the latest one which has been published this year is entitled Sarajivana Lokota, All His Life the Man. Into my poetry right from the beginning has entered the landscape into which I was born, the river, the village, the people, their folk idiom, their songs and dances, all this. It has never been a lonely landscape where the poet stands alone. But while looking at myself and trying to understand myself through words, through my own poetry, I have also quite often, as I have looked at the sky, as I have tried to comprehend reality, from experience having gone to objects, to images, and then again coming back to one's experience, I have sometimes distanced myself from the street. In this process, I have tried to always bring up some kind of a connection. In fact, my poetry has been always a matter of connectivity, connecting the dream of the future to the memory of the past, connecting the city, the turmoils of the city with the steel center, as Eliot said, of my own being, connecting the ancient mythologies to the modern uh, rhythm of life today. I know that words can be very errant. At other times it has been a struggle with the words because language is so important. The nuances of language, as Anand Vardhan himself once said, of Dhanyaloka, that is the light of suggestion, the nuances of words, because words are not any individual suggestion. It's a community property. It has moved from leap to deep over centuries, have acquired meaning. The poet's job, and I have felt that is how I have tried to give perhaps a new dimension to the meaning, taking on what it conveys in earlier times, but giving it a new dimension, always going into new and fresh experience. A steel bird flies away flies away. He does not pause above the water's green depths to look at the fish shining with the magic glaze of silver. Nor does it pause above the river island to eat the red berries and build a nest in the palm tree's body. A steel bird flies away, flies away, holding in its beak the dead lover's letter smeared with the night's sinister stench from the paper mill on the river bank. It seeks under the pale moon the princess of the ruins of Barabati Fort, seeks through the night. Among the significant poets of contemporary India, Sitakan Mahapatra indeed deserves a very special position. His distinction lies with his understanding of uh, Indian philosophy and Indian culture. At the same time, the understanding of his native Orissa, its tradition and its philosophy, its culture, everything. He loves Orissa, he loves his language, he is very dynamic, he is a modern man. But he has not distanced himself from the roots, from the myth, from the legends, and from his origin. But at the same time, he is very unassuming a person. His major themes he draws 
from the native Orissa and his hero is the common man and he suffers and celebrates with the common man's victory and defeat with his happiness and agony and he gives myriad colors to his uh, poetic expression blending myth and modernity. He is a humanist, he is a good human being and he, is, he has proved that a good human being can only be a good poet. Sita Kant Mahapatra and his wife now live in Bhubaneswar. They have three married well-settled daughters, a son and many grandchildren, all of whom have been immortalized in some of his very personal yet universal poems.